6. Let f be the function given by f of x equals ln x over x for all x bigger than 0. The derivative of f is given by f prime of x equals 1, over, 1 minus ln x over x squared. Write part a. Write an equation for the line tangent to the graph of f at x equals e squared. So the first thing, equation of a tangent line, y equals mx plus b. First thing that I'd like to find is the m. And to get m, I know that that's going to be the derivative. And they did give me the derivative. Here's the derivative right here. And they did tell me that that was happening at x equals e squared. So basically what I'm going to do to get the derivative is I am going to plug e squared into that formula. So f prime at e squared will equal to 1 minus ln e squared over e squared squared. Okay, that will equal 1 minus this 2 I'm going to bump out front. So it's going to be 1 minus 2 ln e over e squared squared will be e to the fourth. And then I know that ln e is equal to 1, so this will actually give me negative 1 over e to the fourth. So I've just found my m. Right, my x I know is, so my m, so I equals, my m is negative 1 over e to the four. My x is the e squared plus b. My y value, I'm going to, to find my y value, I'm going to plug e squared into the original equation. So I'm going to have ln e squared over e squared bump that out front so that will be 2 ln e over e squared which will give me 2 over e squared so that is my y value all right the next thing that I would like to do is um, I'm going to simplify a little bit here I'm going to get 2 over e squared is equal to negative 1 over e squared plus b because those would cancel and then to get the b by itself I'll add 1 over e squared to both sides and when I do that, I'm going to get b equals 3 over e squared. So the equation of my tangent line is going to be y equals negative 1 over e to the fourth plus my b value, which is 3 over e squared. Right, that problem was worth two points. If you correctly found the slope and the y value, so you had to find both of those, you'd get a point. And then if you correctly wrote the equation of the tangent line, you'd get your second point. All right, next part. Find the x-coordinate of the critical point of f. So critical points, remember, occur where the derivative equals 0 or is undefined. And then we'll determine whether this point is a minimum, a maximum, or neither. And we'll justify our answer. So I would like to take the derivative and set it equal to 0. So I'm going to do um, 1, whoop, 1 minus ln x over x squared. And I'm going to set it equal to 0. Um, I know critical values occur either where the numerator equals 0 or where the denominator equals 0, so I'm going to tackle the numerator first. Um, I'll add ln x to both sides. And then if I do if I do the logarithm loop, I'll get x is equal to e. Right? And then setting the denominator equal to 0, we'll have x squared is equal to 0, so x will equal 0. However, I am going to cross that one out because it said x had to be greater than 0, so we don't care about that one. All right, so we have found the critical point of f. It's So I'm going to just put right here, critical point, that was x equals e. All right, and then it, we want to determine whether it's a relative minimum, maximum, or neither. So I'm definitely going to do an f prime chart. I'll put e on it. Okay, plugging things in here. Um, just keep in mind that if I plug in ln e, the natural log of e is 1. So if I plug in something smaller than e, that will be a number smaller than 1, and if I plug in a number bigger than e, it will be a number bigger than 1. So um, if I put in something smaller than e here, I will get a number smaller than 1. So 1 minus a num number smaller than 1 is going to be a positive number over a positive. That will be positive. Okay, and then if I put in a number that's bigger than e, this will be bigger than 1. So 1 minus a number that's bigger than 1 is going to be negative over something squared is going to be negative. Okay, so then it said determine whether the point is a minimum, maximum, or neither. I will say the point is a maximum. And then it said to justify, so we'll just say because f prime changes from positive to negative. Okay, that part of the problem was worth 
three points. If you found that the critical point was x equals e, you would get a point. If you said that it, that was a maximum, you'd get a point. And then if you gave your justification, you would get a point. All right, part C. The graph of the function f has exactly one point of inflection. Find the x-coordinate of this point. So to get a point of inflection, we're definitely going to go to f double prime, and we're going to find where it changes sign. Because that would be a point of inflection. So I'm basically going to find the second derivative. So um, if I'm at the first derivative to get the second derivative, I am going to have to use the quotient rule f prime, the derivative of 1 is 0, the derivative of negative ln x is negative 1 over x, and then g prime, the derivative of x squared is 2x. All right, so if I'm finding the second derivative, I'm going to have f prime times g, so negative 1 over x times x squared minus f g prime, so 1 minus ln x times 2x all over g squared, which is going to be x to the fourth. All right, simplifying this as much as I can here, we are going to get, let's see, negative 1 over x and x times x squared. The x's are going to cancel. I'm going to get negative x, and then I'm going to try to distribute the minus and the 2x, so I'm going to get minus 2x, and then this will end up giving me plus ln x, and that is all over x squared. And if I reduce that just a little bit more, I'll get negative 3x plus ln x, I think I did something wrong, but I don't know what here. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay. Um, plus, this should be, oh, I forgot to distribute the 2x. So this would be 2x ln x. Sorry about that. 2x ln x, because it was, um, I needed to distribute that, but I didn't. Okay, all over x squared. And then, um, just to simplify it some more, I noticed that these both have an x, so I'm going to factor out an x. So I'm going to get negative 3 plus 2 ln x over x squared, and then one of the x's can cancel. So my second derivative is equal to negative 3 plus 2 ln x all over just x now. Well, actually, this was x to the fourth. Shoot, just a second, x to the fourth, x to the fourth, and then that reduces to x cubed. All right, so hopefully that resolved that issue. All right, if we want to find a point of inflection, I first of all need to find critical values again. So we're going to find where does the second derivative equal 0. So I'm going to look at, again, at the numerator and the denominator, so negative 3 plus 2 ln x equals 0. So I'll get 2 ln x equals 3. And so I will get ln x equals 3 halves. And then if I do the logarithm loop, I'm going to get x equals e to the 3 halves. And then again, if I let the denominator equal 0, I'll get x equals 0. But x has to be bigger than 0, so I don't have to consider that one. OK, so now to my f double prime chart, I'll get e to the 3 halves. So we're going to be plugging this back into the second derivative. So on this one, um, if I picked uh, e is smaller than e to the 3 halves, so if I put e in here, ln e is 1 times 2 is 2 plus negative 3 is a negative um, divided by e, which is going to be a negative still. And then if I pick something bigger than that, like let's say I pick 100, 2 times ln 100, when I subtract 3, that's still going to be a positive number, okay? So it said, show, or find the x-coordinate of the point of inflection. The x-coordinate will be, I'm just going to say point of inflection at x equals e to the 3 halves. And my reasoning will be because g, whoops, not g, I'm not talking about g in this problem, f double prime changes sign. All right, this specific problem was worth, uh, worth three points. All right, okay, we got two points for taking the second derivative. So if you actually got the right second derivative, you get to give yourself two points. If you made maybe one mistake in the middle, you could give yourself one. All right, and then we'd get one point for finding that point of inflection. So if you got you got the point of inflection x equals e to the 3 halves, then you got another point for that one. Okay, I guess I didn't realize I needed to do d on here. Um, d is to find the limit as x approaches 0 from the right side of f of x, all right? And f of x is equal to the natural log of x over x. On this one, let's see. Uh, if we had a graph, we would be able to tell what's going on here. If I try to plug in zero, I can't. Um, what we're going to have to try to do on this one, um, 
I'm going to, I don't know if you remember um, doing this before, I'm going to take this as a natural log of x times 1 over x, so I'm just going to try to treat them as two separate functions and see if maybe that will work. Um, the l and x, I know the natural log of x looks something like that, and if I'm approaching 0 from the right side, I'm headed towards negative infinity. I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm hoping. And then 1 over x, if you remember what 1 over x looks like, it looks something like that. And as I'm approaching from um, the right side, I'm headed towards infinity. Um, negative infinity times anything is going to be negative infinity. So that would be my answer. That's as close as I can get. Um, that would be kind of a good problem to guess on, I guess. So, um, Or we could also say um, the limit they, do, they are going to accept if you just say the limit does not exist as well. So that might be a better bet to go with, just like in um, Mean Girls. All right, so that is it.